It is an eternal island of legend. A place of unimaginable beauty. And a growing evil. Where the forces of death and life are in constant conflict. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Just touching a little bit about some of the information that came out on New World. I was look had hadn't had the opportunity to take a look at the previous update that came out on the 27th of March, uh, 27th of February, talking about the March to Battle factions. And of course, this is very similar uh, for those who have played the Elder Scrolls Online. The three day the three way faction is literally ESO reskinned, uh, of course, with different mechanics. So the, the three different factions that are talking about, you have access to the Covenant. It's like straight out of ESO. You've got the Marauders, and then you've got the Syndicate. So you have basically a three-way faction war um, for the realm that they have called um, Adernam, um, which is basically where you're going to be able to PvP and take over factories. It literally sounds like Cyrodiil with quests and PvE mobs. Um, it's it sounds very with opt-in PvP. So just imagine open. Just imagine Cyrodiil with mobs and quests. Take some of the dungeons out of the other areas and plop them into Cyrodiil. Um, and then imagine having having open world Cyrodiil be opt-in. And then instead of having open castle sieges, you'd have fifty v fifty. So just just take battlegrounds get rid of battlegrounds take away castle sieges and um, fort sieges and then just replace that with bgs that are 50 v 50. the primary problem that you're going to run into is the same thing that i talked about before in my previous video is that since it's limited to 50 v 50 and it's only two different sides right so as you're kind of pvping through the map they show a little bit of the map down here so when you're pvping over different territories it's only a two-way war between different guilds and the problem is, is that the guild leader, of course, is the one who is going to decide who is going to PvP within these, in essence, battleground arenas where it's 50v50. And of course, it's at a specific time, so it's not even like you can kind of queue up for it, like for, for a battleground in the Elder Scrolls, um, because the person who owns the territory decides at one what time during the day they want, excuse me, at what time during the day they want PvP to be I guess put upon them, right? If you're in a different time zone, you're basically only going to accept invitations to wars um, during the time that most of your guilds are there, which of course limits the amount of interaction between player versus player in this aspect. And of course, this was their answer to what we see in the Elder Scrolls Online called night capping, right? They refer to night capping where you kind of take the map, you know, one side tape the, takes the map during the daytime and then uh, at nighttime, you have like oceanic players or like players who play different time zones, and then they basically cap everything on the map. So this was basically their um, way of kind of getting rid of night capping. The other problem that they're that they're going to end up running into is something that's very similar to that you see on the Elder Scrolls. Is that especially depending upon where your territory is, as you can see here on the map, you might find yourself square in the middle, getting pincered by the opposition by two different oppositions. And of course, if you're like a small scaler, um, you might enjoy the open world, the open world fighting where you can basically sit in the middle and then you can go either left or right um, with your group and of course find PvP. The problem is, is that of course, like we said before, that it's all of this opt-in PvP. Um, the other thing that I did want to discuss real quick was how their current system basically leads to zerging the reason being as they talk about right here um, it says here pvp missions ask you to do things like recover um, tactical information that's a literally quest right out of cyrodiil um, there's a quest in cyrodiil that asks you to go around for the and you basically scribble like on a little thing and you get some ap from doing that um, it says deliver critical messages that's literally similar very similar to what is done currently in cyrodiil it says or 
items to another territory that's also patrol an area for opposing factions and this is accepting a pvp faction mission will auto flag you for pvp unflagging yourself will automatically abandon the mission this is dying during your pvp mission it says will cause you to fail it and you'll have to go back and accept another this aspect right here will lead to people zerging because people will be afraid of dying because they're trying to complete their mission to they're trying to complete their mission so what will eventually happen is, is people will just basically stick around in groups um, which will lead to people zerging for people who maybe don't want to learn how to play for players who typically aren't that good at a dark soul style pvp oriented game um, this will lead to zerging which we already have right now in ESO. So it's how do they get rid of the whole zerging? It seems more like the game is designed around zerging, especially if you're like a, a solo player. If you want to do small scale, um, what, what will happen is the player base, of course, will just learn. They'll just learn, especially if they're trying to do these quests for um, faction rep, as they talk about here. Um, it says generating influence for the controlling faction of a territory. Um, territory uh, reinforces its control. This is very similar to what we had in ESO maybe two to three years ago, where depending upon, because um, back then they had numerous maps, right? Actually, excuse me. Back then they had limited number of maps. It was just, it was just I think, one or two maps. And so, the, you know, you had the three-way war, and then whoever owned the map, whoever was the emperor, whichever, fa whichever faction had the emperor buff, gave the pve portion of the game certain buffs and then all the PVEers who didn't want to pvp were you know typing away endlessly on the forums well, why are you forcing me to pvp i want my pvp buffs but i don't want a pvp but i want the buffs and i want everything that comes with you know the bonuses of pvp but i don't want a pvp um and then so what what eso ended up doing what the developers ended up doing is they ended up adding more maps so then they what they had i think four different maps and then only one map was used for PvP, and the other maps were basically buff servers, kind of like what we have um, in the previous previous patch, where they opened up more 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 different uh, areas of Cyrodiil, and basically some one of them was all blue, one of them was all red, one of them was all yellow, etc. And then primarily people only PvP'd on like one or two different areas, and then the developers just completely removed that whole aspect of the game because it watered down the benefit. Right, if if you're going to give people a buff or some sort of a benefit it defeats the purpose if basically there's no uh, there's no risk to the reward you're not working for it because you're basically pveing um, empty keeps and then basically having the emp buff and of course the emp buff gave extra resources um, and that was prior to one tamriel that's what it was so whenever one tamriel how many years ago that was prior to one tamriel um, that's how cyrodiil worked was that if you when you pvp'd in cyrodo depending upon which which faction owned the map gave um your faction a pve buff for like xp um in terms of x i think it was xp gathering gold gold uh, getting more from treasure chests etc like things of that nature and so this is what they will eventually run into for people who don't want to pvp as of course they've stated that they've moved the game more to the side of pve with pvp aspects so they'll run into the exact same problem that people who just want to pve will sit there and furiously type away on the forums of why are you forcing me to pvp right and th those are that's the exact same thing that happened in the elder scrolls online and so what will eventually happen is it'll it'll water down the aspect uh, of that of having that reward within the game of course this is while generating influence for your faction that is not uh, that is not in control under undermines a controlling faction and brings the territory closer to being vulnerable to a war declaration and so like i said before that this aspect is only going to push people to want to zerg it's going to limit small scaling and of course if you're a person who enjoys soloing because of this aspect of the game right here um, because of this aspect of the game right here, this will lead to people zerging because no one wants to die and then literally um, have to go back and start the quest all over again. Especially if it's like a fetch quest or like a kill X quest and then you randomly get ganked. Um, this is the same problem that ESO had with 
with um, Imperial City, where there is too much uh, risk on the person receiving PvP and all reward on the person who is um, not worried. Like if you're running around and you're not doing this quest, maybe you've already completed the quest, then you can go around and get basically Zerg people. You can basically, maybe you're like a solo person or you're walking around in a small group and you're trying to do this quest. This opens you up to being Zerg. So all of the risk is assumed on the person receiving the PvP and not on the person who is looking for the PvP. And this is why things like Imperial City failed, where all of the risk was placed on the person who was gathering the Telvar, and it wasn't basically mutually distributed between both players evenly. Instead, it was all on the person who was receiving the PV who was receiving um, the PvP PvP, like from a ganker or whatever. And of course, if that person failed the gank, there was no loss to that person. If like for example in ESO and which is why um, Imperial City failed so badly is because of the imbalance of the risk reward where you'd go out, you'd farm Telvar and all the risk was on you and all the reward was on the opposite end. Where If you gank someone, and you basically got whatever it is that they drop, whatever is Telvar or in this game where you kill somebody and they drop a part of their whatever is in their inventory or if that person is flagged, um, flagged red or criminal, you basically can drop whatever your um, whatever is equipped. And so all the risk is on the person receiving the PvP, and it's not mutually distributed between the two players. And of course, it for, in, a, it, in essence, flat auto flags you. So I, that's what will happen. People will say, well, why are, why are you forcing me to PvP? Like, I want to be able to take part in this game. I paid for the game. Why are you forcing me to do this portion that I don't want to do, when I, I but I still want the rewards? It happened in ESO, it's happened in other games. I guarantee you it will happen in this game as well. The other thing that I wanted to talk about was touching on um, a lot of the gameplay does look kind of interesting. It says, as a member of the faction, as you can increasingly um, valuable cont contribution, it says you can supply arms and armor, it says you can complete faction missions, and it says you are a critical member of the standing forces and you will work to increase your faction influence in a given territory and Artenum overall. In times of war, you can recruit fellow faction members to help you defend your territory or to attack a rival faction. And this is where it says that it says you can recruit. Of course, as a guild member, since you are limited to only 50 players, you're basically going to bring your best. What if you're a guild leader and you have hundreds of people in your guild? This basically limits the amount of players that, that you'll be able to take and who will be able to take um, take part in basically these little faction guild guild v guild um, basically battlegrounds because you're going to want to come with your best players you're not going to want to come with under geared players and then lose the territory and then have to wait to be to basically to recapture an area you're basically going to come with your best players which is going to exclude a large amount of players who want to participate in this type of pvp especially because it's timed. It can only be when the person who owns the territory, it's under when they want to receive PvP, not when your faction or when your guild is basically all online and able to engage in PvP. So it really limits the window of opportunity, especially if you have a community that don't want to opt in, especially since it's basically an open era. Just think, just imagine open world Cyrodiil with quests, with basically battleground queues for castle sieges is basically what it is i'm waiting i've seen a little bit of the gameplay it does look somewhat interesting i'll probably just put a link of some of the gameplay or someone who's posted some gameplay and it basically kind of looks like dark souls um like in elder scrolls online you can have multiple weapons and each of those weapons gives you access to both a light and a heavy attack as well as um, two or three skills per um, weapon skill line that's basically the combat looks fairly fluid. It does have like a very um, dark, dark souls type of gameplay. And of course, for those who are very unfamiliar with that type of gameplay, it does pose a learned to play issue. Um, my problem, my primary problem is, is that when you have two different, you know, schools of thought, when you have the PVP school of thought and you have the PVE school of thought, they don't always mesh well together, which is why this game was primarily designed around PvP because it's much easier to balance PvP first and then balance P 
PVE with PVP in mind, that to try to balance PVE and then balance PVP with PVP in mind. Because typically PVEers don't care about being overpowered. It's not like the NPCs are going to be posting on the forums that X, Y, and Z ability is overperforming um, or, you know, etc. But players do. And so players who PVE typically don't care if something overperforms. They, if anything, you'll see people like, you're ruining my enjoyment. I was just having fun and you've ruined my fun. You'll see posts like that. I've seen posts like that numerous times in ESO. Every time they nerf a skill that overperforms, all the PVEers come to the, come to the forums and they're like, you just ruined the game for me. Why don't you just delete my class if you really don't want me to play, you know, that type of post. Anyway, I will be keeping tabs on New World. I am still kind of interested in it. We'll have to wait and see. Um, you know, I think it's next month that I think it's next month that they're going to be coming out with the um, the open open beta for this game, and I'll, hopefully, I'll get the opportunity to check it out. Appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching. Take care. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. Take care. God bless. this place, lured by the promise of power and immortality.